Hi everyone, I'm Caitlin Crystal, a pet portrait artist, and today I'm going to share with you Julius's portrait. He is a very dapper cat, and you'll see why in a second. I'm going to put up all the photos his client sent me on the screen, and um, yeah, I'm sure you are seeing now <laughs> that he's wearing a bow tie in every single photo, and I guess he does wear them on the daily, and his client does want it included in the portrait, so yay, it's going to be very cute. Um, she also requested a green color for the background because uh, he, I guess he's outside a lot and he enjoys it so we're gonna do that for her we're gonna pick out a very nice color and I, I think I'll really bring out the oranges in his fur too so yeah I think I would have chosen that myself anyways and um, as you can see it's gonna be painted on a 12 by 12 canvas and it has thicker edges because she does want his favorite catnip banana on the edges uh, I guess that's his favorite toy and yeah I think that's everything that's who I'm painting today and okay yeah I'll show you real quick uh, the photo that I'm gonna be doing is this one I'm gonna put it maybe here yeah I don't know um, and I chose this photo because it is the most clear it has the best lighting um, his bow tie is a tad droopy for sure I have it on my iPad right here which is why I'm like looking at it <laughs> um, it's a tad droopy but we're gonna straighten that out make it look really nice in the portrait I'm also gonna make him more seated because I, it's just gonna look really awkward if you also include the back in the thing and it, it's gonna be more zoomed on his face anyways so it's not gonna be like that hard to include or draw or make up or whatever yeah okay so yeah, um, I'm going to switch the angle right now so you can see my setup and basically I'm going to just go through the, his entire uh, portrait. <laughs> this won't be a time lapse, uh, I think it's just too long, we're just going to do snippets but I will try to share tips and trips, <laughs> tips and tricks along the way. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I definitely need some caffeine right now. I cannot talk, but it's okay. We're getting through this. I'm not, I, I feel like I'm still getting used to talking to the camera, so please bear with me. I'm sincerely trying my best. Um, I think this is gonna be really fun to do. Um, I'm gonna try to do more YouTube videos this year. So <laughs> yeah, I wish me luck. Hope you guys enjoy uh, the ride. Yeah, okay, let, let, let's get going. Uh, it's, it is 3 in the afternoon, so, um, and the sun sets around like 5 here, so honestly this will be filmed over a couple days, um, but usually this type of portraits take me about like 10, 12-ish hours, maybe more because of the edge details. Um, but yeah, this is going to be a really cool one. I'm excited to share it with you. Uh, let's get going so I can stop talking. Okay. <laughs> This is my palette. It's gonna go on my lap. Um, all right, here's my setup. I always have my iPad right here, canvas here, water cup. Well, I have all my brushes here, and I have a rag here. Um, so I have the brushes, and then my palette always just chills out on my lap. It's very nice. Um, okay, so now I'm gonna get to sketching, and I'll probably switch to a voiceover going forward. Um, it's just going to be easier since this will be probably just a bunch of clips put together. Alright, here we go. I'm excited. Alright, now my, I have a fresh canvas here and the first thing I'm going to do is get his face down. Um, and I do that with pencil every single time. It it's almost feels like a warm up to get to know his face a little bit better. And also it makes me more confident going in with paint. Uh, that is the same pencil I use every single time. Thank you, Oma, for sending them to me. <laughs> um, and I have a more in-depth sort of look at how I do pencil sketches on um, other YouTube videos that I've done on here and also on TikTok especially. And yeah, so I just off camera, I put down all of the colors. And I use the same colors every single time and I'll put them in the description for you. Since this is a larger canvas, I'm going to go in with a larger filber. I think that was a size 8. Um, I got that brush from Michaels actually and it's been working pretty well. So there you go. Um, I'm starting out with filling in his eyes and the underpainting, you don't have to be too specific with the colors you're putting on there. It can be like super generic and I'm just mixing them as I go and 
When I have a certain color, I fill it in everywhere I see it. The whole goal of the underpainting is just to get it going as quickly as possible so you can get past that frustrating beginning stage. So uh, right now I'm using Naples Yellow and White and I'm slowly adding in more yellow, more red as I go. Um, Cause yeah, I'm just making the colors as I see them and I'm starting out with the orange fur. And orange fur is one of the harder furs to build up like color wise, intensity wise. I'm not sure why, but it always dries darker and duller so yeah we got to get that going <laughs> and these darker lines um i'm using burnt umber with a tiny bit of red maybe some purple that's a really good way to keep it warm and make it a little bit deeper and i'll again this is all just to build up the intensity so you don't have to make it to like you just have to get the general color down okay that again this is the, the entire goal just get general colors down and get going now I'm going to get that white fur going, which I hear from a lot of you is really hard for you to figure out, but um, there's a ton of color that goes into white fur. And for example, right now I'm using a light purple for the shade, and I'm also going to utilize the graphite that's already on the canvas and kind of like scrub that in. I think it makes a really nice gray and yeah, I mean, again, it gets all covered up in the end. And yeah, that's basically all I'm doing. And you don't want it to be stark white right away. Uh, so that way you can build the, the highlights on top of that. So you kind of want it to be a light gray anyways. So yeah, I'm just going to fill that in everywhere it, it, it's at. He has a really nice, beautiful white chest as well. So we're going to do that. Also, the ears are really cool. Do you see how they kind of like are spotted white on the edges and inside you're gonna see it in a bit <laughs> um yeah so here's another example of where i'm adding more color into the fur i'm using some yellow for like the where the light is hitting it and then also pink for the the middle of the chest and yeah so now it's all filled in <laughs> um okay so you see how i'm kind of like painting them into a seated position um, it's really chill to do. You just kind of like make the chest and then you'll do like a hint of the back. Oh my gosh, the hooligans in the background, my little fluffs, man. All right, now he is basically filled in. So now I'm gonna add in the background. I made a very basic green using a bit of phthalo blue, yellow, uh, some white and a touch of burnt umber to make it a tiny bit more earthy. And honestly, I do not like this green <laughs> at all. <laughs> it just looks very heavy and blocky. Doesn't really resemble outdoor living for me. Um, but I, I mean, it's the first layer. It always needs to be covered anyways. So uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So be prepared, the background will change. Okay, <laughs> so now I'm gonna start uh, drawing in all of his features, making them look more like him. And it really is just feeling like that. I'm just drawing in all of the outlines of his eyes, his nose, and um, yeah, this is where you need to start paying attention to how everything's gonna go. I like starting at the eyes because once that's in focus, it kind of makes it feel like everything else will fall into place once you have something something that looks more like a face looking back at you you know the next couple of minutes are going to be just that making outlines tuning up his face so it looks more like a face or his face specifically and um it's almost gonna be like a coloring book vibe um i'm just making the shapes and then filling them in it's gonna look almost a little flat but it's gonna set up my texture for success in the future
Okay, he's all drawn in now, which means I'm going to touch up that really gross green, <laughs> get rid of that background completely. And I want to settle for more of an airy vibe, almost like he's sitting in front of like a grassy field or something, which means I need to do a sort of like ombre. And um, so yeah, I'm going to just go in with almost like a chalky color. But again, I'm going to need to touch it up anyways to make it more vibrant. So um it doesn't really matter too much how, how I'm going to do this. Um, what matters is that I have something down so that way the next layer will look perfect. Yeah, so you can already see how using like this brighter green just immediately, I think, makes them stand out more. It's, it's just going to feel like so much better you're going to see. And then I'll build in sort of like the more saturated green at the bottom up into it. And um, I haven't decided yet if I want to completely blur it. Or if I want to keep the brush strokes in a little bit so it does look kind of like grass. Um, yeah, we'll see how it goes. And again, I'm going to go over it again. So this is just all part of the process. so cute that's my dog toby aka october um and yeah <laughs> she really likes to sit under here it's very cute okay just have to show you that okay one of the main places you're really gonna have to blend is the eyes and so now i'm gonna get going on that and you'll see me kind of um start out with putting like lines of paint down and then I'll use another color to kind of shade it out and also my brush was kind of scruffy <laughs> I think I need to buy some new ones um, I, I, I kind of like work around the weird bristles but you'll kind of see how they kind of like slip up a bit and then I'll need to go back and touch it up um, so yeah you're gonna see me do all those things in this clip
All right, now I'm gonna start filling up the orange in his fur, um, specifically on his like lower cheek right here. And I'm gonna be working wet into wet paint. So basically I'll put down um, a deeper orange first and then I'll use a darker burnt umber and I'll kind of like brush that in and short quick marks as you're gonna see me do. And that's gonna make more of a believable texture and it's gonna add more of a shade. And again, I'm just following the, the coloring I see in the photo. And I see a lot of this kind of like dark brown stripey sort of texture happening. And um, yeah, so this is gonna be the start of real texture and that's how I do it, wet into wet basically. For above his eye, I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm just going to put down a brighter yellow color and it's going to look very solid, very flat. But once that dries, I will add on top of it finer lines that's going to like break up that yellow shape and um, make it more like feathered out and everything. I'm kind of switching between those two techniques as well as just making straight up marks to build up the texture as I go. Also, if you're wondering what Toby was doing. <laughs> The next day I got started on his little bow tie. So much fun! Okay, so the hardest part wasn't really fixing the shape because I feel like the bow tie is a really basic shape to make. I think the hardest part was replicating the pattern and um, for some reason <laughs> I wanted to make it hard for myself to replicate that pattern I saw because out of all the bow ties in the photos I felt like th this coloring was the most harmonious with his coloring and the background color by far. So that meant that um, and with any sort of plaid or checkered pattern, um, what you're going to want to do is make a sort of grid. So I'll make like one line and I'll just kind of like follow the folds of the fabric, um, really kind of tracing like how the, the form would be, if that makes sense. And make another line doing the same thing. Then I'll make a line going in the opposite direction until it kind of like looks like this. And then you'll fill them in because they will look like wonky squares. <laughs> um, and you just kind of go with that. And honestly, I don't think I got the pattern right like I, I don't think like the the yellows are supposed to go that way or like the browns but you know what it's fine it's believable enough <laughs> it's gonna look good so um anyways now i'm gonna start adding in white and and all of the highlights uh right now i'm just making his little fuzzy edges and now i'm gonna go in for the eye highlights What I really like doing is a dot and a dash. I think it's very nice having like a little bit of shine um, as well as like the, the main little sparkle. Now I'm gonna go in and fix his chest fur. Um, I'm just using straight white and I'm making the brush marks. It's like kind of choppy towards the top and then it becomes like a, a nice fluffy blob towards the bottom. And as you can see where um, I'm not putting white, it really like leaves kind of like a shadow. And um, that's due to all of like the previous colors I laid down before. It's very nice. I, I really like this part, it's very satisfying. <laughs> and I'll still add in some coloring. Like you can see, I added in some like yellow for like the the shading um around like uh under his chin fluff <laughs> if you will um and yeah now it is strong enough to where i can add in the whiskers and um pretty much i i will have to usually go over them twice uh the white doesn't again it, it fades it, it needs like at least two coats so um it is a little bit tricky when i have to go over the same line twice but it's all worth it in the end and he has really gorgeous long whiskers Now I'm 
I'm going to show you a bit of how I did the edges. You can see this was the reference I was given and it's kind of hard to see the banana but I looked online and this looks like the closest uh, catnip banana I could find. <laughs> so I'm basing it off of that one and um, I just put down, I, I mean I'm making these like just icons so they can be pretty two-dimensional as long as you know it gets the point across that these are stuffed bananas and um basically i'm just doing a brown outline and um i don't think you'll see in this clip but i do add some stitching towards the top to make it look like a stuffed banana and really that's just like the last thing i'll touch up for this sort of and are you ready for the grand reveal <laughs> okay here's how julius ended up um, he is such a cool cat. I think he has really unique features and yes, I just love the fact that he has to wear a bow tie. It's just so unique. And um, what I mentioned earlier, you can see the little touches of white around um, the edges of his ear and things. And um, I haven't really seen a coloring like that before. So that was really, really cool. Um, but yeah, and that's how the background ended up. I kept it kind of brushy. And okay, the edges presenting this was really kind of awkward. <laughs> I probably should have just like kept my camera on the tripod and did this, but I thought you would want to see a closer up view. But it, it's kind of hard when I try to like turn around, you'll see it's, but I mean, you, you'll, you'll get the gist, you know, uh, it's all the way around. And um, thank you guys so much for watching. And if you ever have any questions, etc., leave a comment and I'll be sure to reply.